Hi friends, it's Peggy Noe from prettypapercards.com and today I have for you a video tutorial on how to make this darling jar of flowers card. So this is the final, what the final card will look like and I'm going to show you what we're going to use today. So we're going to use the jar of flowers stamp set by Stampin' Up and we're going to use also the jar punch those two items to create our jar of flowers. Now we're also gonna use the bow punch to make some leaves. And we're also going to use um, these doilies that are multicolored heart and home doilies, I think they're called. And we are just gonna use one and we're going to turn it over and use the back. That's what I've discovered is you can use the back and it's just white and it's very pretty. The other thing we're going to use is um, some of this 6x6 six six Tea Boutique uh, Designer Series paper. Now this is coming out in the 2022 to 2023 annual catalog, but you can use any floral background. Um, this has uh, Fresh Freesia is the color and that's why I wanted to pick up this color. So let's get started. We're going to begin with a card base and it's 11 by four and a quarter and scored at five and a half. So let's just get that scored right here. And then what I've done is um, I've taken the scallop contour dies and this is the largest rectangle in that in those dies, and I have used that to create our our um, background for our jar using the paper I showed you. So let's just adhere that with some multi-purpose glue. And the sad thing about this one sheet of paper is that the other side is pretty lemons, so um, we. I want to be careful with it and not use too much of the fresh freesia side because I really like the lemon side also. Okay, there we go on our multi-purpose glue. Now we're going to uh, go ahead and put our doily on right in the center. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on here. And that then we can go ahead and create our jar. So there we go. Now we're going to set this to the side. <clears throat> and take a scratch piece of, let me get it, a scratch piece of basic white cardstock. And this is what we're going to stamp our jar on. And the inks we're using today <clears throat> are Crumb Cake, Pool Party, and Granny Apple Green. So for our jar, I'm using, for the outline of the jar, I'm using Crumb Cake. So we're just going to open that up and go ahead and stamp it right on here like this now this is a reversible stamp so to get the water look inside of the stamp we're going to use some pool party ink and what you do is you just take this stamp and turn it over on your block like that and hope that it sticks. I was having a little trouble with it sticking. Okay, and then we're gonna um, get some pool party ink on that. And we're just going to hover right over the jar and press down and get some water in there. Look at that. It looks like water, doesn't it? Isn't that neat? Okay, now let's go back. And we're going to stamp, there are three different floral jar toppers, actually four, I guess, that you can use from this stamp set. I'm going to use the one that looks like tulips, and I've already got that mounted on my clear block D. And I'm going to stamp that again in crumb cake ink. And the reason I'm using crumb cake ink is because it, it kind of disappears. It's just a light border if you know what I mean it's not um, it's not like a like a black border it, we're gonna color this in and so this is good because it allows the color to show more 
it just kind of uh, fades into the background. So those are our flowers. And now the last thing we're gonna do in our stamping is put on, put at the stamp that is the stems of the flowers. And I looked at the stamp and I think this is probably where the flowers are come into the jar because that's real straight and then at the bottom they're looser. I'm not sure. Maybe that way where it's looser at the top. In any event, I'm going to use Granny Apple Green ink for this. And let's see, I think I'm going to go this way and pretend that this is where the flowers come in. And so I'm just going to ink that up. And then what we want to do, it really doesn't matter. We're going to cover this up with the ribbon. So the biggest thing is to get the bottom part of the stems inside the jar. So you're just going to stamp right over the water like that. And there are your stems inside of your jar. So that's pretty much all the stamping we're going to do. Now let's get our punch. And here's our jar punch. And all we're going to do is just punch out that's right, I did have a little bit of trouble here with this the other day. There we go. Sometimes if you just bounce it a little bit on your on your table, it'll come, it'll kind of release. So we're just gonna punch out that jar. Just like that. Now let's see if we can get it to release again. There we go. I've had this jar punch for a long time. And I, I don't know. I think I might have to send it back and have it fixed. I'm not sure because I can't. I was having trouble before. Okay, there we go. I think it's um, it should last forever, but um, maybe I was too rough on it. I guess that could be true. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to sit and we're going to do some coloring with Stampin' Blends to color in our pretty flowers. And I've got all these different Stampin' Blends here. And I'm gonna color the tulips with light, fresh freesia. And you don't have to be really exact. You know, watercoloring, if this were water, actually watercolored, it's sometimes a little bit um, not exact, if you know what I mean. So we do, you don't have to be real picky. You can just kind of smear that around is what I like to say. And so all the tulips are going to be purple. Fresh freesia. Um, let's see. I thought I saw a little tulip in here somewhere. Oh, here's a little tulip right in here. Okay, and here's another little tulip right here. So this is really what takes the longest time. The flowers are going to be the other flowers, and for all I know, they could be open tulips, but I'm creating them as a little bit as other flowers. And I'm gonna use light, flirty flamingo for these other flowers. Again, just kind of a quick coloring, not a real picky, detailed coloring, just kind of quick along there because we're going to have a little more detailed coloring to come. So we're going to get those flowers colored. Let's see, maybe a little bit in there. Okay, now we're going to use the dark um, flirty flamingo for these little guys up here, just to give a little, we're just adding a little different, a little some different colors in here. And a little bit here. See, I'm not being real detailed in there. You just kind of do that. And let's see, we'll get some of these colored in here. And the others, I think, I'm going to put a little of this, a little in there. The others are going to be blue. And I'm going to use here the dark pool party for these little flowers. I just want those to look a little bit darker. Let's see, we've got some of them down here. Do you see any more? I think I've got most of them. Maybe a little one right in there, we'll say. 
And then we're going to go for our stems and leaves. The stems are going to be the dark granny apple green. Here are the stems, and this is where you need to be more careful. Whoops, I think I'll go with the pointy end here of the dark granny apple to get the little stems of the tulips. This makes it look so much more realistic. And the stems of the flowers, where you see those, maybe right in there. Okay. And then we're going to go with the light granny apple green for the other leaves. All the other leaves are going to be the light granny apple green. And that is going to match our, um, our stems that we put in the water in, in the jar. Let's see if we can, this is, you know, this is relaxing. You just kind of relax, sit back. Just put a little green in there. It's not exact. But one of the important things is to use the light basic black for the centers. This, I noticed, made a real difference. And I'm kind of just dotting here. But that really brings the bouquet to life. Just like that. And I think that's about it. Okay. So we've got those done. Now we do not have um, a punch for this. So this is something that we're going to fussy cut. And I know many of you don't like fussy cutting. Um, you could just leave the paper and set it on the card and adhere the jar down below if you wanted to use a rectangular piece of paper. But I'm just gonna um, kind of fussy cut this out quickly. And again, it doesn't have to be really exact. People are gonna be looking much more at the flowers than they are at your fussy cutting. This is such a pretty stamp set. I love the jar of flowers. Um, this is a set that's been around, I wanna say maybe even four years, and it's continuing into our new catalog right now. And I think it's just because it's so traditional um, they, they still, the florists still put flowers in mason jars. It's still quite popular. And so it replicates a bouquet that you might receive. And in fact, I have to say that even recently I received a bouquet from one of my neighbors. Um, very, very sweet. And it was in a mason jar. So I know they're still doing it. And my feeling is this is kind of like sending flowers to somebody when you give them a, a card like this. It's as if you were sending real flowers, um, but it's less expensive and um, they can keep it where the flowers kind of poop out. All right, so there, there is the rest of our jar. Now let's get out our card base. And we have our we have our jar like that and we're going to put this right under here and what I decided to do is I am going to glue the top the flowers right on the top of the jar just like this just like that we're just gonna hold it there a minute I'll just turn it over and we'll press it down a bit. And then what we're gonna do when that is glued is we are going to put some ribbon around our jar. And this is Fresh Freesia Open Weave Ribbon. Now this ribbon is, I believe it's continuing on into the new catalog. It is gorgeous, I just love it. And you could definitely tie a knot if you prefer, instead of tying um, instead of tying a bow. And I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, what I do is I take some of my Stamp and Seal Plus, and now this is adhered, the, uh, the jar is adhered to the flowers, and I'm just going to run some of this across right, right like this. Okay? And that is what I'm going to stick my ribbon on. So kind of right in the center of the ribbon, I'm gonna go ahead and press it right on like that. 
and now we're ready to tie our bow. Well, our flower's got just a tiny bit crooked, but that's all right, because we're tying the ribbon over top, and that's just fine. So we're just gonna tie our bow right here. Nobody's gonna notice that those flowers are just a tad crooked. And let's just get this ribbon tied in a little bow here. Let me get in there and grab that. There we go, I think I've got it. No, there it is. Just move it a little to the side. And then, you know, you just play with your ribbon until it looks just the way you want it to look. Just keep right on playing with it until you get it just right. That's why I think some people don't like to do bows because it does take just a little bit of patience. You have to be patient and you have to just keep on playing and keep pulling the little tails down and keep pulling the loops in. Let me just see. I think that's pretty good right there. Okay, now we're ready to adhere our jar of flowers right on there, and we're going to use Stampin' Dimensionals. We're going to put a couple of dimensionals on the back of the jar, and I think maybe three up here on the flowers, just like that. This is going to be an entire piece that's going to adhere I bet you didn't know that. I bet you thought it was several different pieces. Okay, so we're going to adhere it just like that. And now, that almost looks complete, doesn't it? That just almost looks complete. But what we're gonna do is we are gonna add some pear pizzazz leaves. Uh, let me get my bow punch here, B-O-U-G-H. And we're just going to punch out some of these leaves and boughs. Just like that. We're going to do that about three times, I think. And that'll give us plenty to play around with. Sorry about that loud noise. And then all we do is we are just going to stick these right in here with a little dot of glue and it's easy to do that because the um, the jar itself and the flowers are lifted up on Stampin' Dimensionals so all you have to do is just slide your little leaves right in there just like this and it doesn't even take very long just gonna slide those in let me see let me get it down in there one in there okay there's another one and then I like these little tiny ones because they add fullness without being too too big and it just takes a few dots of glue and you just press them in like that let me get another one I really like this this punch, this bow punch, because you can do so much with these little leaves. And really, well, let me see, it might need another one. It might just, because we never want it to be even numbered, so we need to put five of them on there. That's what they tell you. That's the artist, artist's advice. Okay, so now we've got five, two large leaves and two little, little ones. And now I think we can um, go ahead and trim our ribbon. And then we're gonna put on some beautiful pearls. These are the, let me see the right name, pastel pearls. And they come in beautiful purple shades. And here is the very light purple. Whoops, that's the darker purple. I think I'm gonna use this lighter purple right here, right in this area. So let's go ahead and take a few of those. And 
then we're just going to put those right on like one. Two and three. Where should we put our third one? Hmm, maybe right down here. And there's your pretty card. Isn't that beautiful? I I love this this card. It's so pretty, and I think you're gonna love it. It's easy to make. Put different backgrounds, color your flowers different colors, and anybody would love this beautiful jar of flowers. So thank you so much for stopping by today. If you haven't subscribed to my uh, Pretty Paper Cards YouTube channel, I really ask that you do that. And I just thank you for, uh, for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.